Hi class, this is the second video for week two, and what we're going to do today is bulk add user accounts. So I'm on my mail server, I have my time is already synchronized. Um, basically what I did on the DC was run the time command and then enter 1852, that was the time that, I, that it was in military time. Then on my email server, I just ran W, 32TM precinct. Sometimes it'll give you an error here, but if, it re if your time is correct, then it worked. So what I'm going to do is open up a new tab, and I'm going to create a, a new script. Um, I'm going to call it, uh, first I'm going to create a command called import CVS. And the file name is going to be users.c, excuse me, import CSV. And the file name that I'm going to import is users CSV. And I'm going to pipe that to another command. It's for each object. But I'm just going to use the alias for each. And then I'm going to put a command. So basically for each user in this list, I'm going to run it against this command. New mailbox and the same account name will be dollar sign underscore dot Sam account name. I'll show you where this, this is an environmental variable and I'll show you where it's set in this CSV file. The next field that we're going to set is the name field, dollar sign, underscore, dot, name. Then we're going to do, if I'm looking at the new mailbox command, Actually, I'm going to stick with th this command, not with what we have, what, what's in the textbook. We did display name first. So I'm going to do display name. Dollar sign. Underscore. Dot display name. Dash. First name, last name. Dollar sign underscore first name. Last name. Database. I'm going to hard code the data, but no, actually, I'll, I'll just stick to uh, putting in everything as a variable. Um, no, actually, I'm just going to hard code it in. All these user accounts are going to be added to the same database. We won't pass in the database as a variable. User principal name. and the name field. I'm going to scroll out of this a little bit so I can get it all in one line. And then I need to end up with another bracket. These are squiggly brackets, not, not the regular straight ones. So basically, I'm going to read this file. This file, ha file will have a list of users in it. And for each of the users, I'm going to run this command against that list. Um, and the first column of that file 
excuse me, the first row of that file is going to have my variable names. And we're going to create that now. Hi, class. Um, the servers were uh, crashed over night, so I'm going to continue with the lab where I left off. But my time is wrong. So what I'm going to do is set my time. I'm on my DC. I'm running the time command. It is currently 522, so we add 12 to that. So it is going to be 17, 22, hit enter. Now our time is right on our DC. So I'm going to go to my exchange server. I just booted it up. And I'm going to sync the time. W32TM resync. My time service hasn't started. Uh, I'm going to try this command. I'm going to pause it while the command runs. Okay, now that the service is started, because I was getting an error saying the service wasn't started, so I ran this command to start the service, and I'm going to try to resync. And it was successful. So if you get a error saying the service wasn't started, manually start with net start, and it's called Windows time. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. Okay, class, um, I typed this script in, that's why I paused the video. Sorry, I have to make it small, just so everything fits in one, one uh, screen. So here, here's what, what's going on. So we're using this website, uh, generatedata.com, and we wanted to generate some names for us to import. So I'm going to go into um, first name, and it says uh, John male name. I'm just going to get the word, get rid of the word male. So it's, it's uh, gender neutral. And um, then I'm going to do last name, then choose surname. I'm going to do a CSV file. I'm going to change the delimiter to a comma. I'm going to generate this data. The header is first, then last. Then I have 100 lines of all the user accounts. So I'm going to control A to copy everything, to select everything, then copy it. Minimize this, open up Notepad, paste it, 
and save the file on my desktop as raw CSV. And close this out. And basically what this is going to do, it's going to create a new file called output.csv on my desktop. Look what directory I'm in. So currently I'm in the, the user directory. So inside of this directory, there's a desktop directory. If I do a DIR, I have a desktop directory. Inside of that, I want to create an out file called outfile.csv. And I'm going to put this as the first line. Sorry, control Z. I don't want this to be the first line. And basically this is going to be my header. These will be my variable names. If you remember guys, my machine crashed when the, the server crashed. Um, these are going to be the variable names. So these need to be the name. This needs to be the value on the first uh, line of our CSV file. So that's going to put in my header. And then I'm going to read the raw CSV because I couldn't find a data generator that gave me first uh, and last name and a full name and a, an email address. All I can get is a data generator that just generates a first and last name. That's not going to be sufficient enough for our script. So what we're going to do is read that file, raw.csv, take the first name, say first name, last name. That will be the display name. Then the first name. That's a comma right there. That will be the first name. Then the last name, a comma. Then the user principal name, the first initial, make it lowercase, last name, the at symbol dot, uh, contoso dot com, and that's a comma. That will be my user principal name. Then again, I'm going to display first and last name. So it's going to read the raw file, take the first and last name, and create an an importable CVS file that will have the display name, which is first and last name, comma, the first name, comma, the last name, comma, the user principal name, comma, name. And it's going to read one line at a time, then add it to that out file that's on my desktop. So I save this to my desktop, but where I save this file is not really important. I'm launching it from my user's administrator folder. Inside of that, I have a desktop folder. So I'm going to press play. So if I go to my desktop folder, I have an out file. If I edit it, it says first name. Guys, I have, too many, I have a mistake here. I have spaces, and I don't need the spaces. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to delete the out file. I need to get rid of these spaces. Sorry, I didn't notice that. So I'm going to press play. It's going to save it. So here's my raw file. First, last, that's my header. Those are the names for the variables. That name right there is set here. So everything in this first column is going to be assigned to the variable name dollar sign underscore dot first. Everything in the second column will be assigned to dollar sign underscore dot last. So it's going to take this file, read one line at a time, and then create this file for me. Display name, first name, last name, user principal name, name. Display name, first name, last name, user principal name, name. The name and the display name are identical. So I just did this just to create 
our CVS file that we're going to use over here. So um, I was just going to try to find some sort of data generator that did this, but Chris in our in our class just wanted to come up with a script that will convert it for us, and that's what this script does. Uh, his script is a little bit different than mine, but um, he had some other things in here to, to trim it. I just manually trimmed it by not having spaces inside of the the brackets. So that just generates our CVS file. Now I'm going to go to back here. This was our original script. Guys, it crashed. I never actually had saved it, so this is recovered. So I'm going to do file, save as. I'm going to call this import mailboxes. Now it's actually called out file dot slash desktop out file. That's the file we created with this script. So I'm going to save it. Hopefully I don't have any errors. So it's going to read the display name, enter it into this command. Enter the display name, the first name, the last name, the database. I hard coded that. It doesn't change for any of my user accounts. The user principal name and the name. I might generate some errors if any of those names are duplicated or I have a duplicated user principal name. If I do, I'm just not going to worry about it. So I'm going to press play. Okay, I'm getting. Uh, an error here, so I'm going to solve that and then come back to this. So I'm going to pause the video. Okay, I figured out the problem. I was, I didn't have, um, I had this in the other line. So this should be right after for each. I can't put this on the other line. So I'm going to try to run this now. Okay, I'm going to try this again. Okay, I'll figure out what I was doing here. So basically, I have this script written. I need to launch it from here because this is where I have all my PowerShell commands. So I'm going to do dir desktop. I'm going to look at my desktop folder. I see that I have that script called import ps1. So I'm going to do dot backslash desktop import mailboxes and run that script. Okay. Okay. Guys, when I reboot this machine and uh, logged in, this was already open from when it crashed. So basically I just shut this down, relaunched my Exchange script and press play to rerun it. Hopefully this time it'll, it'll work. So I'm in my desktop folder and I'm going to go up back to the parent because remember I designed my other scripts to run from this folder. I put the relative path. So I'm going to do dot slash desktop slash import import mailbox, excuse me, import mailboxes. I'm going to press cancel. I don't want to, I don't want to do this. I want to look at that script again. I'm going to pause this. Okay, guys, I just realized I forgot the password in my original script. I'm going to save it. So I I just hit file, open, and I opened the import mailboxes. I forgot the password there, so just add it there at the end, save it.
go back here and rerun it. So basically, guys, I just highlighted this line, executed this line so my password was set, then ran the command to run the script. While that's running, I'm going to open up this again. So this script. right here will be used to create our CSV file that we're going to import. I used the data generator to ge generate our raw file, saved it on my desktop. Ran this against the raw file, created my IL file. Once that was done, I then used this script, which I needed to fix and add this last line to actually add the, add the mailboxes to the exchange server. But I had to do it from this shell. If I didn't, I wouldn't have the new mailbox command. I had to relaunch this because it was still, I guess, from when it was crashed, when it crashed. For some reason, I had to mainly execute this command. Um, to have all my passwords set. Now, if I look at get mailboxes, get mailbox, it should have created all those mailboxes for me. And if I look in Active Directory users and computers, All those user accounts will be here as well. Okay, guys, here's what I want you to do now. This is going to be the, the last video for week three. So for week four, I'm going to start doing grading. So once you're done with week three's videos, send me an email so I know you're done, and then I'll grade your setup on ACIT. I know this uh, video was a little bit confusing because of the crash and plus having three different uh, scripts I need to deal with. Um, if you're confused, see me on Tuesday. We'll work it out in the classroom. Um, again, you should create my out file. It grabs my raw, creates my out file. I need to execute this from my management shell. Otherwise, I won't have the new mailbox command. Um, This is my management shell for Exchange. If I don't have it here, I don't have any of my Exchange commands. Guys, I could easily just give you a copy of this script and this script and have you run it from there. But I, I really want you to create these scripts, try to understand what's going on with them. Um, PowerShell is very important with Exchange Server, so struggle through it. These are commas. These aren't periods. Uh, this is a period, this is a period, this is a period, comma. I'm not sure if you can see, but I have this maroon color that is, um, lets me know that that's a, a comma. Okay, guys, send me an email if you have problems. I'm going to upload this video. There's nothing like a video that leaves all my students confused and bewildered, but... It is what it is. Thank you.